Today I want to talk to you all about one of the most common drugs used to control seizures and treat epilepsy. This drug is called phenobarbital and there are some very important things to know if your dog is suffering from seizures and taking this medication. Hi, I'm Dr Alex from ourpetshealth.com where my aim is to help you and your pet live a healthier, happier life, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel if that is something you're interested in. Now, while epilepsy is a relatively common disease in our pet dog population, as I've discussed in a separate video, there are many other causes of seizures in dogs. While phenobarbital may be used to treat seizures due to any cause, it is used most commonly in the treatment of epilepsy and comes under many different brand names, including Epiphen and Epitil. Now, the drug itself is also known as phenobarbitone, and the two names, phenobarbitone and phenobarbital, um, can be used interchangeably. So phenobarbital is a pretty effective first choice when it comes to the treatment of epilepsy in dogs, with over 80% of epileptic dogs having their number of seizures reduced by half, and actually about a third of dogs will become seizure-free, so the phenobarbital in effect completely eliminating their seizures. It's not a drug, though, that can be guaranteed to have an effect with around 15% of epileptic dogs failing to improve at all. So that's how effective phenobarbital is at controlling epileptic seizures in dogs. Unfortunately, if the seizures are caused by something else though, such as organ failure or a brain tumor, then the benefit of phenobarbital is much less predictable, as well as generally being significantly less effective. When it comes to starting treatment, it takes about seven to 14 days for blood levels to stabilize and the full ability of that drug dose to control the seizures to be evaluated. It may be that a dog is started off on a higher dose just to try and speed up this process, although this does actually then increase the chance of side effects developing, at least in the short term. So the best dosing plan for your dog is clearly something that will be assessed by your vet and discussed with you. And if side effects do develop, then this really will need to be re-evaluated. So what then are the potential side effects of phenobarbital in dogs? Well, to start with, sedation and wobbliness, they're frequently seen when treatment is started. And these typically resolve within a week though, unless really high doses are being given. Vomiting can also be a problem, especially when first given. And while phenobarbital doesn't have to be given with food, if your dog is being sick, then giving the phenobarbital with a full meal can help to prevent this vomiting. Similarly, an increased thirst, increase in urination, and becoming very hungry are often seen at the start of treatment. And these can persist while a dog is being given phenobarbitone, but they will frequently become less severe or resolve completely with time. Moving on to much less common side effects, the big one really is the potential to cause liver damage or liver failure. And this is one of the main reasons that monitoring blood tests are carried out. These blood tests, they'll often show a mild to moderate increase in liver enzymes, which in itself is generally not an indication of liver, liver failure, um, if though the levels are climbing steadily, or if they suddenly become very high, then further testing might definitely be needed, um, or a drug change suggested, and there are a number of different, other different anti-epileptic, anti-seizure medications to choose from. Other uncommon side effects mean that some dogs will become excitable, some will develop a behavior change, and in very rare cases, skin or blood cell disorders can develop. Finally, although not a side effect exactly, if phenobarbital is suddenly stopped, then seizures are very likely to be triggered. And this can even be due to a single missed dose. So if you find that a dose has been forgotten, it should be given at the first opportunity and the treatment plan then continued as normal when the phenobarbital is next due. So all of this being said, is phenobarbital appropriate for every dog with epilepsy or for every dog suffering with seizures of any cause? Well, no. As you can imagine, if a dog's liver is not working properly, then it really should not be given at all. And care is also needed if a dog is dehydrated or if they're anemic, so they have low numbers of red blood cells in their blood. If a dog has heart or lung disease, and care also needs to be given if a dog is pregnant or if they're lactating. But that being said, an epileptic dog should really not be used to breed because as I've said in one of my other videos about epileptic facts, um, epilepsy does have a genetic component with the potential to pass the epilepsy onto their puppy, so their offspring. Um, so, you know, that's really why we shouldn't be breeding dogs with epilepsy. And then lastly, as I've already alluded to, any dog being given phenobarbital needs regular monitoring. And that's for two main reasons. The first is to keep an eye on how effective the drug therapy is. 
So in the first instance, this is to establish an effective dosing regime at the start of treatment, and then to make sure that the drug is having the desired effect at controlling epileptic seizures. Once an effective dose has been established, it's important that this is closely monitored because the body actually becomes more effective at breaking it down and eliminating the drug the longer a dog is being given it. So as a result, it's actually possible for the levels of control of a dog's epilepsy to become worse with time. Keeping a seizure diary is a great way of monitoring this because it can be quite difficult to remember when a dog had their last seizure, how many they've had, how bad they've been. And a seizure diary really helps you to relay this important information to your vet. Blood testing is also really important. As you can imagine, this will help to monitor both the levels of phenobarbital in the blood, which can then help guide the need to change the dose being given or identify that high levels are already present, um, which can then increase the chance of a liver problem developing, or it might indicate that a different treatment strategy is needed should the seizure still be under poor control. Of course though, as well as measuring those phenobarbitone levels, blood testing will also help to keep an eye on a dog's liver enzymes, as well as the number of cells within the blood. So to give an early indication of some of the more rare, but significant and serious side effects, it stops them becoming a real problem or really reduces the risk of them, of your dog ever developing them. If your dog is epileptic though, remember that three in four owners consider that their dog has an excellent quality of life and that if they are well controlled, then they have a life expectancy of around 12 years. So while it can be a challenging and upsetting condition to deal with, the actual prognosis and outlook can be very good. Make sure you check out my other videos about seizures and epilepsy. Hit the thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe and until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.